What's up guys, NEXT here, and I'm currently standing in front of the Luxor Temple, and I've made a discovery that could change what we know about the Luxor Temple. Stay tuned for an adept expedition. <laughs> All right, guys, here we are. I'm now standing in front of the eastern pylon of the Luxor Temple. And take a look at these standing colossi. Things are not what they seem. I have a theory that this statue doesn't belong, and I'm gonna show you evidence for that today. So if you take a look at all of the standing colossi in front of the pylon, you'll notice they're similar to this one here, which is the standing colossi with his left foot forward. Why left foot? Well, in the simplest sense, it's a statue that's, uh, in a sense, alive, right? It's left foot forward, taking the first step in the grand cosmological scheme of things. Why on the left side of the body? Well, that is because for the ancient Egyptians, the heart was the seat of consciousness, and the heart is on the left side. You also find a similar position in different traditions here on the continent of Africa, where you take a left foot, the left foot forward. It's symbol of stepping into action as opposed to this statue here where you'll notice the feet are together and if you look up above the arms are crossed this is called an Osirian pose this is the Osirian or Osiriide or basically it's a representation or an expression of uh, Osiris the king was considered Osiris in the afterlife and you'll notice his legs are together so this he in a sense is it has transitioned into the afterlife. He's taken the role of Osiris. But if you notice, all the other statues will look similar to this one, taking the left foot forward, and they're holding uh, what Egyptologists say is the royal decree in his hand, although we don't know with certainty exactly what that is in their hand. That's the best educated guess. But over here, you can see the statue is clearly uh, the arms are crossed. Now, this statue was just added last year. It's been a little over a year since they put this piece here. You'll notice the colors are much different. That's because this is largely restoration. You'll see there's pieces here near the leg, then there's some on the arm and some of the face. That's all original. The rest of this is all largely res uh, restoration. So keep this image in your consciousness. And remember the standing uh, left foot forward statues because I'm going to take you around inside the temple now and show you the evidence for why I believe this statue doesn't belong. Let's go. So we're now entering into the courtyard of Ramses II, Ramses II, and what we're going to do, typically tourists go this way, we're going to take a detour and go over here. And we're gonna exit through this portal right here. Now this was originally the path of the Opet festival, which would take place starting at Karnak. Uh, we know at least since the time of Hatshepsut, that's before the inception of this entire temple, with the exception of the oldest extent, which is the Ramses Triple Shrine, which is actually a Hatshepsut Tutmosis Shrine, usurped and reworked. Um, well, not a shrine, but more of like a way station, which was part of the Opet Festival, which would have come to Luxor originally on foot down the Avenue of the Sphinxes. But this is the original path of the Opet Festival, which originally would have left Karnak on foot and come here to Luxor and then return by boat. Thus the two elements of land and water juxtaposed in that eternal cycle for the Opet festival. That changed over time, the time by the time of Ramses, by the time this temple was built in uh, Tut Ankamun, King Tut, as depicted on the inside of the colonnade over here, the festival changed actually. And now they would actually they they moved Karnak around to actually disembark by Karnak and the boats would come along the Nile. Then they would enter by this path here and go into the temple. And then eventually they would go back by water as well. There would still be people participating on the land, but that's the way that the Opet festival, uh, 
the evolution of the Opeth Festival, if you will. But why I brought you out here is because I want to show you, now these two statues were restored in the last year. They haven't been here very long. You can see the restoration and some of the original work. And what do we notice? Once again, it's in an Osiride pose. That is the representing the image of the deceased king, which is Osiris, wide, and the arms are crossed. You have the right arm over the left arm, and you'll notice it's a little low here. So this is a nod to the uh, deeper esoteric aspects. You always want to note the position of the arms. They can be low, middle, and high, and each have a specific symbolic meaning. We're not going to get into that today. We're not here to talk about the esoteric symbolism today. We just want to, well, I want to point out my evidence for why I believe that statue doesn't belong. So if you notice, again, these in Osirian pose, these two are here. Now the Opet Festival would have entered through here, straight through this entrance is what they call the uh, Duara Kit. It's the portal where the plebs or commoners, where the uninitiated could watch the festival take place. They couldn't enter the temple. That was reserved for the high priest or, you know, the initiates, because this was all sacred space. They would have to stay on the other side but they could watch the festival procession go through here. And I suspect that there were two statues like these on the other side, and that one of those statues is what found its way to the front, and it's likely just being placed there by the antiquities, uh, you know, Ministry of Tourism, just for the look, just for the symmetry, just to complete having the statues, you know, symmetrical statues in the front, but is it really doing justice to the ancient depiction? I would say not. And the reason for that, I'll show you the evidence is right here inside the temple. Right this way. So right over here, we have all the many sons of Ramses. This is Meren Ptah, who later came to rule over Egypt, succeeding after Ramses too. But this is a depiction here of the temple facade. So you can see the entrance, the portal. You can see the two pylons here. If we look close, you can see the original obelisk, which is no longer there. It's been taken to the Palace de la Concorde in France. And then we have the obelisk that is still standing outside right here. And then you'll notice that there's the original flagpoles right here, the pennants. And then we have the two standing uh, colossi on this side. Again, taking the left foot forward, they're holding what we think may be the royal decree. And then here you have the seated statue and the other seated statue. Now look at these two, look very closely. And what do you notice? They're both left foot forward holding on to the royal decree. Unlike the statue and the pylon in the front where this one, the legs are together in an Osirian pose with his arms crossed. Here, if you go back to the beginning of the video, you'll notice the statue is just like the two over here that we just took a look at. In, in the Osirian pose, the one out front, but here in the depiction during ancient times, what it looked like for the Egyptians, his arms are down by his side, holding again what we think may be the royal decree. We don't know it with certainty. But this is the temple facade. This here is a representation of Luxor Temple, the pylon. All of this is part of an offering procession. This all wraps around the Opet Festival, it wraps around through the entire temple where they bring the offerings into the back the cows to be slaughtered by our moon. But go ahead and get a close look at this and you can go back to the beginning of the video to compare this statue with the one I showed you. This is what it looked like for the ancient Egyptians in that time. One of the other things to point out, you'll notice the statues are all facing inward, which isn't uncommon. You, you'd kind of expect to see something like that, like the Avenue of the Sphinxes, everything facing in. But this is how the ancient Egyptians were depicted by a profile. So it's likely they just did this that the statues weren't necessarily facing this way. We don't know with certainty, but what we do know is that this statue does not look like the one that we have out front. Absolutely amazing. So there you have it. I've uncovered a hidden truth here at the Luxor Temple that 
could change the way we look at the history of this historic temple. Was it done with the intent of just satisfying tourists by creating a more symmetrical look? I can't say with certainty, that's only what I can assume. Does it really help paint an accurate picture of you know the temple's antiquity, what it looked like? I don't think so. It doesn't really help researchers to get a clear picture of what the temple looked like in ancient times. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you're new here, please go ahead and subscribe for more videos like this one. If you liked the video, give it a like. And if you did like the video, I suggest you watch the next two videos I put up on the screen because these are the videos YouTube thinks you should be watching next.